investigation into the relationship between contractors who do business with the city and elected officials who lead the city. A recent Gonzalez poll found 79 percent of likely Democratic voters believe officials should not be allowed to receive campaign contributions from city contractors. Comptroller Joan Pratt has defended the contributions she's received from people who do business with the city. But it appears she's not the only one. Jeff Abel shows us what he's uncovered in tonight's investigation. Last month, we began examining the politicians here at City Hall who award contracts to their campaign contributors. And tonight, our probe goes even deeper. Winning a city contract in Baltimore means winning the approval of Baltimore's Board of Estimates, a panel that approves more than a half a billion dollars in contracts each year, and a panel that's chaired by City Council President Brandon Scott. To follow the law at every cost, and when there are relationships, you have to disclose those. You have to make sure that you're not voting on the information. You have to abstain from that information. But our investigation questions whether Scott has followed his own rules. In October, Scott voted to extend the city contract for the Frankfurt Towing Company and its sister company, Mel's Towing. A month later, contributions to his campaign started rolling in. According to campaign finance records, Scott received $2,000 from an administrator at Mel's and another $2,000 from a second administrator. And the company contributed $500, and the contributions kept coming. Three months after winning the contract extension, a resident agent at Mel's in Frankfurt pumped $6,000 into Scott's campaign coffers, and an associate donated another $500. And then there's the case of the Spiniello Company, a New Jersey-based construction company with an office in Baltimore. In August, Scott voted to award that company a $6.1 million contract. And over the next five months, the New Jersey-based company and an associate contributed $6,000 to Scott's campaign. And then there's the case of the Lord Baltimore Uniform Company, which Scott voted last June to award a $130,000 contract with the city. Over the next seven months, the company's executive would donate $1,500 to the Scott campaign. There are no coincidences in uh, politics. Taxpayer advocate David Williams says it's time elected officials stop accepting contributions from city contractors. This is why people are so cynical of elected and non-elected officials. They seem to be looking out for themselves and not the city or taxpayers. The contributors haven't responded to our request for comment, but the council president has. Every single vote that I take is only based on one thing. And that's what's in the best interest of the citizens of Baltimore, and it's done ethically and legally. So that's what I'm going to continue to tell you. Nothing else is going to change about that. I'm an ethical person. I follow the rules and law. Every vote that I take is based on what's in the best interest of the citizens of Baltimore City. But what's difficult to gauge, according to David Williams, is the question of influence. Who is really influencing who? There have been calls to tighten the laws as they pertain to city contractors and campaign contributions, but so far, little action. At City Hall, Jeff Abel, Fox 45 News. Scott is now a candidate for mayor of Baltimore. In a statement released late this afternoon, his campaign writes, quote, the council president is very careful to comply with the city's ethics law intended to guard against improper influence or even the appearance of improper influence and to ensure public trust in government and has been transparent in disclosing his campaign contributions. Tonight's